to tell us what you're doing. Ah, are we are we on? <coughs> okay. Um, I wasn't going to be doing this today. What we were going to be doing today is have a talk about the architecture, and we've nearly solved all the bugs in that. But Freya had a a small accident today. She fed her finger into a, what was it? A julienne peeler. <laughs> <laughs> so I shouldn't be laughing because it was very painful and delayed us a little. So um, we're going to have to be doing that next Monday. Is that right, Freya? Yes. Okay. So what I'm doing with this painting, <clears throat> I've painted the rock form that I did before with zinc white to knock it back, to push it into the middle distance. And then I painted three rock shapes in front of it just to see what it's going to be like with aerial perspective, to see how one thing will go naturally behind the other when it's got that layer of atmosphere to separate it. Yeah, that was very frustrating. I've pretty much nearly figured out this way of doing the videos. So Dad can do a PowerPoint presentation and we either do, I'll show you, we even got this sorted out. Look at this lovely expanse. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we've got a green screen, uh, but also a cool program where you can do a PowerPoint presentation and Dad's in a little circle in the corner. And I've, I've all my, I think if I had another 10 minutes, I'd have figured it out. But yeah, like Dad said, I got my uh, finger spaghettied. And, uh, and then <laughs> I've never really had this before. But Dad's side of the family, when they see their own blood, they get very faint um, and sometimes are sick. And I always found that funny because it had never happened to me. And then today, <laughs> I got my finger stuck in the Juliana making courgette spaghetti and uh, and I looked at it and I was like I'm gonna be sick <laughs> luckily I wasn't but I had to lie down for ages and then I fell asleep it was the weirdest reaction and I used to work in a medical museum and like I've seen some of the most gruesome things you can imagine <laughs> but like a little cut on my finger I couldn't couldn't manage Oh well, <laughs> so that's my excuse as to why we're watching Dad paint again. Sorry about that. <laughs> I really wanted to do an architecture talk though because we've really got things moving on the house. Um, do you want to say a little bit about that while you're working, Dad? Yes. Well, we seem to have sorted out a lot of the um, a lot of the problems to do with moving it. Um, we're going to see a contractor on on Thursday. We've we've had a chat with Mike, the architect, and getting him drawing. So it does look like it, it's moving. But we've, if I can give a couple of note notices, on Friday, this week, it would have been John Wetton's birthday. He'd have been seventy one, and um, it just, I mean, it's sad that he's gone. But it reminds me of the times we had discussing albums like <laughs> Alpha, Phoenix. We had long chats about them, about the symbols and the significance. And it was brilliant talking to him. And sadly, that's not going to be anymore. The other thing I was going to talk about is that sometime later in the summer or early autumn, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to do another live painting session on a new YES project. And there's two. One of them I've mentioned. That's going to be a series of paintings plus a, a narrative for a Close to the Edge box and the big YES project which at the moment is unknown. It's a known unknown. Um, Monday, we're going to have this nailed. We're going to have the green screen, the slideshow, 
and it's going to be well for me it's going to be a lot of fun because I've been dying to talk about the architecture and we're going to get there <laughs> we've got a few suggestions that I make courgette gnocchi instead <laughs> Really, I was slightly traumatized. Even like after I sat down to eat, I kept looking over at that peeler, like I'm never going near that again. <laughs> I'm a grown woman, <laughs> and I thought that was terrifying. <laughs> We've had requests to see my boo boo, so I'm going to show everyone. <laughs> <laughs> what gruesome people! <laughs> Thank you for joining in. I won't show you underneath that because some of you might be having your dinner. It's not that bad. It's, it's really not that bad. <laughs> okay. I mean, there's one way of painting in 3D, and that is to paint each layer at the right tonal value that it should have. Um, and in this case, that would have been probably the way to do it. But sometimes I find it easier to paint the, the middle distance and the background as vividly as they would be because I can see what I'm doing better and then fade it back afterwards and so that's exactly what's happened here uh, the other picture that was the pair of this I'm going to leave as it is but with this one I wanted to just take it down and then add ro rocks in the beginning in the foreground and see how much they'll jump out in comparison to those at the back and if they don't jump out enough I'll knock them back even further in the middle distance. So this is my profession now, watching paint dry for a while. Can I speed it up? I could. Occasionally. Do you want a hair dryer? Do you have one handy? I do. Yeah. Useful things, hair dryers. Thank you. Will it reach? I guess it will. I really like using hair dryers, doing watercolour paintings as well, doing thin washes, drying at thin wash, and doing a veil. I don't know what people can hear, if they can still hear us talking. <laughs> Kaya, how did you know I wanted to do ballet? Oh, I mentioned it, didn't I? <laughs> I haven't done much. <laughs> Avon asks if there'll be any more flying elephants. <laughs> it's really funny they're saying the sound is fine and there's something very odd that happens about the sound on these microphones because I was talking to my uncle the other day and he was sat there and he went oh my god and I thought I wonder what happened is he okay and his dog had barked really loudly but I hadn't heard the dog bark I just heard him is that someone mentioning dad's haircut we should say by the way if you do notice that dad's hair is looking a bit funny he cut it himself <laughs> he wouldn't wait for me I did oh, offer wait. I wasn't supposed to show you the back just the front <laughs> <laughs> You're in charge of the camera, friend. I need you to show more description. I can't show your front and the painting. <laughs> okay. I need another brush. Someone Excuse said me. they've signed up for my class. Will it be in graphite? Um, yeah, whatever you like. Pencils. Um, the idea was sort of, because I came up with it in the midst of the lockdown situation, the idea was that you use just whatever you've got handy. Um, but graphite is good, uh, pens, pencils, anything you want to use really. Thank you very much for signing up. If anyone else wants to join my class at the, <laughs> at the uh, end of the month, if you go to my Facebook page, Freya Dean Art and Design, or my Instagram, Freya Dean, um, I prefer to paint in watercolour. Yeah, absolutely. If you, if you want to do watercolour, that'd be great. 
Do you prefer paint from watercolor? Uh, no, that was just what uh, Kaya said about uh, what she likes to do in the class. Dad, we're getting a lot of um, dead screen. Sorry. I had geared myself up to talk in front of a slideshow. So this, but this is fine because it's, a, I've always, for weeks now, I've wanted to finish this and it's, it's, I'm enjoying it. I'm going to come in a little bit closer while you're doing. So this is you cutting into the sort of wet random marks of the dripping water, is that right? Yes, and you can see they, they kind of shape themselves into something that looks like a crack in the rock. So, so it makes it easy. We did it when we did the back one, so. Just out of shot at the top there. If you could um, contain your painting to from that point and about six inches below. If I could what? Contain your painting area. Oh, okay. Um, is this gray or black that you're using? Oh, it's a mix of um, blue, magenta and yellow. Can you show the pot? Well, I doubt the colour yeah, will show. A bit higher up. A bit lower down. Imagine you're doing it for the camera on the phone. Yeah, Where, that's it. Can you see? I, <laughs> I doubt you can. It looks like a very dark blue when the light hits it. But it is roughly a mix of um, the three primary colours. So it's dark, but it, it has a lot more colour in it than just using black, so I prefer doing it this way. Brian says, happy little trees. Happy what? Happy little trees. Ah. You know what that means now. I know what it means now. What can I say? Uh, we had a question that I thought was nice. What are your desert island paintings? What I, I don't know how many they gave you. I can't remember what how many discs you get on desert island discs, but um, ten. What, ten. Yeah. Well, let's not let's not do ten. Should we do? Should we do four? <laughs> what, what four paintings or four discs? Four paintings. What paintings to do or paintings that exist? Paintings to take with you on Desert Island. Ooh, I'd be worried they get damaged. Um, I, I, I guess it, I'd have to take acrylics because they're less likely to get no, damaged. No, 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 no. Paintings. Paintings. Yeah. What paintings? Well, if it wasn't a Desert Island, I'd have said Relaya. But because it is a desert island, then it's likely to get damaged. Oh, I see acrylic paintings. Yeah. So just your own then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I figured that was the point of the question, but excuse me if I got that wrong. I'm not sure. I missed the question, but you know, but it, up to you, Dad. If you just want to take your own paintings, you can do that. See your <laughs> desert island. Well, one I did like, and I think is amazing, is the Starling. What's that? It's a painting you did for um, Ben Craven. Ah. But you can't buy it. You can't buy it in vinyl or CD, only as downloads. I'm not sure about that. I feel like I have it. Do you have a copy? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, what are the paintings of other artists that you would like to take with you on Desert Island? I think was the question. Yeah. I see. I see. Um, what I would like to do is say, ask me next week and I'll give you a list of ten. But right now, I'm not really thinking well. Um, I think I would have to take Hieronymus Bosch's Garden of Earthly Delights. 
Really? I think that should be like the equivalent of the Bible and the full works of Shakespeare. Because, yeah, because there's so much in it. You'd never get bored of it, would you? There's really funny things and really cute things and weird things. Funny and cute are not words that come to mind when I think about painting. There's one, there's like a little fat seal coming out of a pond in a part of it that I really love. Hmm. Strange. We had a couple of things that we wanted to mention generally, actually. Um, one of them was that, as you guys might know, um, we've been booked up on our course and we're starting on Wednesday and we're very, very, very excited. Um, but we know, I mean, it booked up very quickly. So we know that there are a few people who um, wanted to join and couldn't. And what I wanted to say is, as well as putting your questions for Friday, um, if you want to put, so apparently there's too much shadow on here, um, if you want to put your name down somewhere or email us, we're going to make a, um, a waiting list for the next one as well, just in case you don't want to miss the next one. We kind of... I don't know if it's been a sort of conscious decision, but we've been trying to let you guys know before going public with anything generally, because you've been watching with us a lot. Um, so yeah, if anybody wants to join the next course, we're not sure exactly when it will be, but if you let us know, we'll let you know when we're gonna advertise it so you get first dibs. I feel like there were some other kind of points we had to make but otherwise generally yep your questions for Friday stick them in there and I really like the ones that say question for Friday at the beginning because then I just go straight to them and that's really simple but keep asking questions for today as well um will I restock my scarves yeah I've got to find somewhere that does um hand roll stitching um hems because uh, the company where I get them from doesn't do particularly lovely hemming and I am not good enough to do it myself, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, <laughs> what's your favorite art museum in New York City? Richard asks. My favorite museum in New York? Mm. The Natural History Museum. What about art museum? It's got some great stuff in there. Charles yeah, Knight, who did all the but paintings in the dioramas. Have you ever worked with the artist Philip Castle? Yeah, we published his book. In fact, we published two of his books. Wow, okay. The questions are coming a little bit too fast for me to get a grip on them. Um, if I miss your question, by the way, and you definitely want to put it to Dad today, um, keep asking. Uh, and I might see it. Sorry, Michael, I missed the first part of your question. I've only just seen the bit that says Japan question mark. Um, Chengus asks, what do you think about impressionists? What do I think about them? Mm. Have um, you got feelings about them? Well, if I'm allowed to include Turner as an impressionist, which he pretty much is, I love his work. I love that mystery of it. Yeah, I mean, I like lots of kinds of art that are nothing like what I do. So, yeah, I like I like the Impressionists as a movement. We had a question, what have we learnt about each other doing these broadcasts? Well, that you faint at the sight of your own blood. I never knew that before. <laughs> I didn't actually faint, though. No. I just felt a bit woozy yeah. and wanted to sleep. 
Well, one thing that's been great for me is that um, Freya has really, really kind of pushed me into taking action on a lot of projects that have been moribund for a long time. So you won't see the fruits of that for quite a while, but it's it's definitely things are moving forward in a way that is both exhilarating and unexpected. Hmm. I'm trying to get people's questions, but I suppose um, I should say something about that too. Um, what have I learned about you doing these? <laughs> what can I say? Nothing. Not <laughs> <breakfast>. <laughs> um, I've learnt. Actually, no. This is a positive thing. Uh, <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I've learnt that. Um, hmm. I can work with Dad. And I've learnt how, <laughs> which is basically. I don't try and like convince him to do something or try and get him on board with anything. She just tells me to do it. I just start doing it <laughs> and get dad to sign off because otherwise he'll want to think about it and get it right. And I'm like, no, we do it now <laughs> or we do it never. No thinking. <laughs> no getting anything perfect before we start. We've got to just do it. And then you, I mean, you guys know what we're like. <laughs> <laughs> you sometimes you just have to start and get better as you go along hopefully and so I've learned that I can work with dad as long as I just do the sort of background stuff and then just give him a nudge now and again when I need him to get in front of the camera or something like that <laughs> call a contractor Why do you paint bugs on Yes logos, Chengus asks. I feel like maybe, did we ask that one before? We can do it again. Is there a reason? Bugs. Hmm. On the Yes logos. I guess, is it the chop ones that you did there? Um, you know what? I was just expanding the range of um, uh, heraldic creatures. And, uh, you know, they had the classic lion on the Royal Affair tour. But it, it's, it was an interesting look at her, heraldry. Um, dragonflies don't feature much in European heraldry, if at all, as far as I can tell. But in Japan, they're a big deal because they're a symbol of courage because they don't fly backwards. For that matter, birds don't fly backwards. <laughs> what can fly backwards now we're talking about it? No, nothing I don't think. <laughs> Mum and I were talking about this, I can't remember why, but we were talking about parachutes on aeroplanes. Oh, that's right, because Mum did that parachute jump. Um, and they said to her, um, we're going to jump out of the plane um, there's one backup parachute, it can only take one of us, we've got a knife, you're not having it. <laughs> and before she jumped out. And I thought, why don't we all get a little one person parachute on an aeroplane? And mum was like, you, you got no chance, you're better off in the aeroplane. And I thought, but what if you know, you was like, well I don't know, we shouldn't get into this. But I, <laughs> I suppose I was just kind of thinking, why don't we get parachutes? I know people wonder that all the time. Is it just because our chances would be so low we would never get out of the plane? That's not a question for me. Okay. Um, a question for me is, what is the title of your painting that graces the cover of the Synesthesia album? Um, that's a really good question. That's a really good question. I don't know that I ever had a title for it. I think I'll have to think of one and I'll get back to you. Hummingbirds can fly backwards. Yeah, I suppose hovering things can, can't they? Yeah. Good answer. Mm. That wasn't mine, that was Martin. Um, someone wants my opinion on Yes's music because their wife is my age and she didn't take to it. 
I like it. <laughs> but of course, I would say that. <laughs> but I do. <laughs> but I grew up with it as well. So it's very difficult to disentangle what aspects of it are, you know, because it's kind of bonded in my psyche and what is because I would just like it anyway. Um, ben Crompton wants to know how to go about getting you to do an exhibition at the Dali Museum in St Petersburg. Oh, I love that museum. Oh. Yeah. Well, he's on board. Sorry? I'm saying you're on board. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I've been there quite a few times. But I t my favourite museum there at the moment is the brand new um, Western Art and Natural History Museum. Is it Western? In St. Petersburg? Mm. St. Petersburg in Florida we're talking about. Oh right. <laughs> I don't know if there's a St. Pe if there's a Dali museum in St. Petersburg in Russia. Right, right. No, I thought that was an interesting combination. Um but how do, how would they get you to be involved with them? Email. They all they have to do is ask and I'd say yes. So go to the website, go to contact yeah. And it'll get to you. Yeah. Is a Dean ex exhibit at the Dali Museum possible? Well, it looks like it. <laughs> How did you paint the cover of Steve Howe's Turbulence? How did I paint it? Mm. I painted it, I painted quite a few. And they were just like calligraphy, just trying to get the gestural movements perfect. And um, and I refined it down to six, which I photographed. And um, with the six that I had, I was in um, Topanga Canyon in Malibu with them. And Kai... Kai Kraus was playing with some software which eventually it wasn't published at the time but eventually became uh, Photoshop but at the time it was in beta it was being researched and or developed and he he took the photographs and played with them in Photoshop so that's basically how it came about so half me, half Kai. I'm just going to do a little close up. I like the way it's coming. It's sort of looking rock like. Mm. Um. Are you going to do a logo and lettering session, Stuart asks. Am I going to do a what? Logo and lettering session. Yes, I am. When we've got the, um, the uh, green screen nailed, which will be sometime in this week. Um, will it? I, sorry? Will it? Yeah, I, I, we might do that before we do the architecture. We'll have an argument about that, no doubt. But it, it would be good practice. So yes, imminently is the answer. Hmm. We've um, had it a couple of times that people have asked to see the original Relaya. Where is it? Have you got it? Yeah, well, it's, it's in San Francisco. But it's about to be moved. So when, once that happens and it's all sorted, we'll tell you where it's going to be. David asks, have you ever overpainted a work so you didn't end up liking it? It's never seemed worth doing that. Um, but I have overpainted a big part of a work. So... I've kept bits and repainted bits, but I've never repainted a whole canvas. 
Mm. Um, we've had another per- person asking after Martin. When will he join? Yeah, that's, I'll ask him if he will. Mm, that's Dad's brother. For anyone who doesn't know Martin. He um, he built all the early yes stages. A couple of people asking what will happen to the videos when I'm not here. Well, <coughs> magic. Um, I'm trying to teach Dad <laughs> how to do this, and failing that, we've got an idea for someone who I think would be very good to give Dad a hand with it. Sometimes I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe Christabel. Do you think we could get her to? <laughs> okay. Well, we'll do something. I mean, one thing I can't do when I'm painting or whatever is I can't answer questions because I can't see them. But if you send them in, I can do as like we do with Freya now, a session for answering the questions. Hmm. I mean, it would have to sort of become its own thing, wouldn't it? Maybe where you kind of have something that you want to talk about while you're working or show people how to do. Yeah. And it would just have a little bit of a different tone to it. Hmm. I'll hear another question. Um, what are your thoughts on Klaus Vormann? Oh, the revolver. Is that what they mean? The, re- the guy who did the revolver cover? I don't know. Um, maybe they will let us know. How about John Cleese <laughs> to replace me? <laughs> if it, if the person who asked the question meant the man who did the um, Beatles Relair cover. I met him and we had a long chat. We ha- actually had a show together. Yes, Kaya says yes. Right, we had a show together in Germany. And he told me a story which is sadly way too common amongst artists. And that is that um, I think EMI paid him 50 quid to do the cover. And then, even though he agreed to do it, on the basis that he kept the original, he never got it back to this day, as far as I know. So if anyone knows where that is, Klaus really deserves to have it back because he never sold it in the first place. It's it's a problem, really. Um, It was the end of an era when Artists never got any value for what they did. And I shouldn't say it's an end of an era because it's it's an era that hasn't ended. But he had a very close relationship with the Beatles and he thought things like that would have worked out better, but sadly not. I mean, I suppose that at least wouldn't happen again because you'd send a digital file rather than... Yes, well, digital files save a lot of um, mysterious disappearances, Hmm. but not all, sadly. They still happen. Hmm. Uh, What was the inspiration for the ladder? Um, Well... For reasons I can barely remember, I wanted to paint a city, a little corner of a city. So that's what it was. It was the corner of a city. And it was interesting because it was, although it was a Yes album, it was also the cover of a computer game where Yes had some contribution by doing the music. So, 
it had a double life. Oh, someone was just going to give me a green screen tip and then it disappeared. Please post that again. That would be great. Um, Avon asks, have you ever had a painting stolen? Who, me? Mm. Yes, a lot. Mm. Sometimes from record companies and sometimes um, in more mysterious circumstances. So yes, I, at this moment, I think I probably six or seven paintings of mine that are not around. Do you ever find out what happens to artwork that goes missing? Um, yes, sometimes. Um, what seems to happen is people steal them and sell them. And then at some point, somebody writes to me and asks for me to verify if it's genuine. Does that not make it quite easy to catch? Who it does. It? it does. I never understood stealing art because what do you do with it? You can't get the full value and you can't melt it down. Ah, light the green screen. Yeah, so we had a little practice with the green screen earlier and we seem to get quite an interesting effect slightly mottled we need some practice um, but the thing that seemed to work best is um, using a program that makes a kind of PowerPoint presentation and a little bubble in the corner where your head is and so you can kind of explain what's happening while you go through but I the green screen is so much more fun I really want to I want to play with that it will be yeah, and um, if we've got another week to do it, we'll really figure it out. Dad's getting a new computer as well. <laughs> so uh, so that should make things a little bit easier. My, mine is a valuable antique. Um, the problem with both of, our, both of our computers are over 10 years old. So um, Dad's won't load Ecamm for doing these sessions. Mine won't load the new Mojave for getting the new Keynote. So together we've had to sort of botch together some way of <laughs> doing a presentation, which will be fine by next week, but we're getting there, we're getting there. Are the acrylics straight from the tube? Avon asks. Wow. Go to the back of the class, you weren't paying attention. And I said you should mix three colours, magenta, blue, no, 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 generally they like, do you use the acrylic straight from the tube? Do I use them straight from the tube? Often, yeah, often. Um, can you pass me a thing of water, Fred? Mm -hmm. Not to drink, by the way. No. Have you ever met Frank Frazetta? No, I never met him. Although all the guys we published in the studio book, like um, Michael Kaluta and Jeff Jones, they knew him, and they liked him. Oh, people like you and me doing this together. Maybe if we both get that program working, we can do them kind of, you know, remotely and have each other on the screen while we have a chat <laughs> and you do some painting or a talk show or something. I will feel a little bit redundant, though, <laughs> if I'm not doing the tech stuff. Do you know of any news of a yes reunion? Asks Mike. Any news of what? A yes reunion. I'm not the person to ask. Um, I've heard no rumours to that effect though. Hmm. We've um, had someone, I think it was Will Baker, ask about a Dean Facebook group. That would be nice, wouldn't it, if we do one, like a family one. What's that? A Dean Facebook group. Look, I'm really Never just learning how to use Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll have a think about that. So nice. people tell me I'm the wrong generation for this technology, but actually my problem isn't generational. 
um, my problem is that I was dyslexic and a lot of technology requires the opposite skills to dyslexic skills <laughs> so Hmm. <laughs> um, if you'd been given Led Zeppelin instead of Yes, would your art have been the same or different? Well, I, I think it would have probably been different. <laughs> so in a group, fans could share some images, says William Nickers. In what? In a group, people can share images, says William Nickers. Is that your real name? That's amazing. Okay, well, I, I'm glad that there is... Yeah, I mean, let's, let's try it. Let's try it. Weren't you going to do something like that in, in Tokyo anyway, with Mitsuyas? Something like what? Videos? Like group and sharing images and stuff. Yeah, yeah, don't know what you mean, don't know what you mean. All men are dyslexic to some degree, just ask any woman, says Mark. <laughs> 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 I like that bit in the IT crowd where, um, I can't remember his name, one of the guys has had an argument with his girlfriend and she told him he must be on the artistic spectrum. <laughs> And then he was like, yeah, I did think it was weird. She paid me a compliment right in the middle of the argument. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the opposite end of the spectrum to, to Asperger's where you are very capable of looking at fine detail and figuring it all out. I can do it in a painting, but in a manual, No. Oh, Dad, you're pouring your paint out. Ooh, bugger. <laughs> Not the first time. <laughs> what is the album cover you didn't paint but you want but you wanted you had but but you would have liked to have painted? Ask Chengis. So let me figure that question out. What painting would you have liked to have painted that you haven't painted? <laughs> That's an interesting philosophical challenge. <laughs> yes, that's different to though who I would have liked to have done it for. Um, it's going again. I, you know, any painting I would like to do, I get round and do it sooner or later. So I, I don't worry about that much. Oh, Russ asks, any idea why so many dyslexic people are incredibly creative? Yes, you do, because I got you that book. I've done my homework and I've read the book and I can tell you the answer. Uh -huh. <laughs> All over your, the surface of your brain you have little columns of s brain cells and people who are very focused on detail have them very close together. But people who are dyslexic have them very far apart and that gives them a, a slight advantage in making connections which gives the impression of being very creative because you put things together in a way that probably they didn't exist before so that is, takes me up to chapter five <laughs> in the book <laughs> is the impression of being creative how is that different from being creative it actually is there's no difference um, is Martin left-handed? Uh, not left-handed, sorry, dyslexic. <laughs> no. Although they often go together. I don't think so, although, strangely, he has a lot of the symptoms. <laughs> <laughs> the good ones or the more difficult ones? <laughs> well, the good ones, I guess. What was it like meeting Lewis Hamilton at the Valentino thing? Well, it lasted the best part of about three seconds. 
we mm. said hello. <laughs> it was brilliant. <laughs> When you do a large background, do you do anything to slow the paint from drying? No. No, not really. I can, um, and I've got retarding agents, but I don't really use them much. Sometimes if I'm doing a large background, I literally put cups of paint all over it. And then I leave it to dry for a few days. So you don't, so unlike watercolour, the drying doesn't make things no. tricky? No, no. It's, um... Oh, the book, by the way, we've just been asked, what's the name of the book about dyslexia and creatives? It's called The Dyslexic Advantage, and it's just, it's more about um, a various amount of things that people with dyslexia have um that gives them lots of different kinds of advantages but creativity is one of one of them is that right or is it mostly about creativity it's oh they list four four, four principal advantages and one of them is thinking in that narrative one is making connections and one well, the connections is linked what, to having a very good overview of things. Um, I haven't read it yet, so I can't tell you the last one. I'm only <laughs> that far through. Would you? I like this question. Would you like to do a series of paintings based on Gustav Holt's The Planets? The idea of planets or the music? Um, well, I guess the music. Well, I suppose both. Hmm. Maybe. Hmm. Interesting. I am um, in Japan. Uh, I am not ambidextrous. That was a question. I'm. I'm a. Yeah. Unfortunately, totally right. Um, but in Japan. They play um, what I always thought of as I vow to thee, my country. Um, I can't remember when. There's a specific time, like when shops close or something. Um, but they call it Jupiter because obviously they don't, they don't know the song as I vow to thee, my country. So they call it Jupiter. But there are Japanese lyrics and it's a love song in Japan. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? The two completely different reactions to that music. I can't I can't imagine it as a love song after knowing it as I vow to thee my country. But there you go. But I love I'd love to see that. I think that would be amazing. And I love that song, the music for that one particularly. Would you ever use a palette knife to add thick paint to enhance depth to your painting? What physical depth? Um, I didn't use a palette knife when I did the sketches for the, uh, the the Yes album, but I did put it on very thick with a brush, so I was kind of ladling it on. I've sort of forgotten. oh no, a squeegee. I used a squeegee. Right. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say I've sort of forgotten. We kind of um, have to finish at some point. Ah. Um, we've been going fifty minutes. Um, what I always say to everyone is your questions, if I didn't get to them, we are going to get through this week and post on YouTube, Facebook and the website the answers. We're going to go through all of them. This week we won't be doing a public live because we've started our private course and that's going to be on Wednesdays at the same time from now on. So from now on we're doing Mon Monday live and Friday Q&A and um, next Monday at 7 p.m. British summer time we're gonna be doing the architecture talk because yeah. we will have figured that out. Shall we start with the logos? 
Um, oh, well, I get that's a good point. Um, if you guys want to comment, if you prefer to watch Dad in front of a green screen or a PDF talk, would you prefer learning about logos and text, or would you prefer learning about the architecture? Um, so, if you comment what you'd like, maybe do know. both. I don't know. We'll have a look. We'll do a t few trial runs. Yeah, yeah. And Friday we'll be going through your questions from that week's Monday as usual. Um, there were loads of good questions that I didn't get to, so we'll we'll get through those on Friday as well. So if uh, we didn't ask during the session, look out for those. And if I finish this off in Let's secret, as it were, I'll post it. Yeah. Or maybe on Friday we could have a little look at it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, we got some people want logos, some people want architecture. Well, whichever one we don't do on Monday, we'll do the other, the next yeah. Monday. There's lots of stuff we've got which I'd like to show you, like stages, you know, the stuff we've done for stages. I like the idea of doing some sketchbook stuff too yeah. and going through the sketchbooks because I, of your stuff, I think they're my favourite things are the sketchbooks. Really? I didn't even know you'd looked at them. Yeah, I often draw in them too. <laughs> well, I remember that you used to draw in them. Yes. <laughs> They'll be like, rock and tree, rock and tree, rock and tree, cat, rock and tree, rock and tree, rock and tree, <laughs> horse. <laughs> Sorry. <You behave. laughs> I, I'm going to have to get myself a new producer. <laughs> So thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, let us know if you want to be first to hear about the next course. Um, watch out for the Friday Q&As in case we didn't get your um, questions here. And we will see you, those of you who aren't our students, because some of our students are here now, we'll see you guys on Wednesday and we'll see everybody else next Monday, hopefully. Thank you very much for coming. It's been a fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. It's been a fantastic what? I don't know. Fantastic <laughs> privilege and honour. It's been wonderful. Bye-bye. <laughs>